Hello and welcome to another 101 lab. In this lab, we'll be looking at an introduction to Python scripting. Python is an interpreted, object-oriented, high-level programming language with dynamic semantics. Its high-level built in data structures combined with dynamic typing and dynamic binding make it very attractive for rapid application development, as well as for use as a scripting or glue language to connect existing components together. Now, don't worry if that sounds a bit too technical, we'll get into it and break it down. In this lab, we'll be looking at some fundamental concepts around scripting with Python. Python is a good coding language to learn as its syntax is very simple and straightforward. Python is also very versatile and has the ability to import massive amounts of code from libraries, shortening the workload on developers. To begin, we will make a very simple first script. Open a terminal in Kali and create a new document. Open this document and type the following. Print, hello everybody. Save this file as the following, script.py. So let's do that. Okay, so if we now type, or even we can copy and paste this, print hello everybody. We can press control S to save. Save this file as the following, script.py. Then make this file executable by typing the following, chmod plus x script.py. Finally, we can execute this script by typing python3 script.py. This will print hello all to the console. So let's do that now. So if we type ls, we can see our script.py file right here. If we now type ch, now mine is already executable because I already did this, but normally this would be not highlighted in green, it would be in white text. And when you type chmod plus x script, just like it is there, or script.py, it would then turn green, indicating it is executable. So we can skip that step as I've already done it. Then we can type python3 script.py. Okay, and you can see it printed hello everybody to the screen. Just note that instead of double quotes, it should be single quotes used here. So I'll update this document to reflect that. So, okay, we've created our first script, which printed hello everybody to our console here. Okay, so we are now familiar with how to create and run Python scripts. For the rest of the tasks, you can use the same script and delete the contents of it each time. This will prevent us having to create new scripts and then make them executable and then execute them all the time. We will now look at mathematical operators. These allow us to add, subtract, etc. in our scripts. Here's a list of the different operators available in Python and their syntax. So addition is plus, subtraction is the dash or minus, multiplication is the star above the eight key, division is slash, modulus is percentage, exponent is two stars, and four division is two slashes. Don't worry about the last three, we won't be covering them here, but just so you know what they are. So if we wanted to perform simple mul multiplication over sum, we could type five star five, and this would multiply five by five and give us the result of 25. There are also comparison operators available to us, as in any coding language. These are the following. So greater than, less than, equal to is two equal signs, it's important to note this. Not equal to is an exclamation mark followed by an equal sign. Greater than or equal to is the arrow and then the equal sign. And less than or equal to is this arrow and then the equal sign. Now we will look at variables. Variables are how Python stores information. There are a number of different variables in Python. They are listed here. String, which is used to define text. An integer, which is used to define whole numbers, for example, the number 12. Float, which is used to define decimal numbers, example, 3.2. Boolean, which is used to define true or false. It can only be one or the other. So Boolean can actually only hold true or false, that they're the only two options it can be. And then list, used to store a series of data types in a collection. Variables are used in a very simple way in Python. We can create a variable and print its contents very simply in Python. So let's just take a break there and just note that I don't expect you or nobody expects you even for the exam to learn off every bit of information here, but it's useful to have and you can refer back to it while we are going through this next bit. Open your script and delete all of its contents. Then type the following, number equals five, print number. So let's copy this, go to our script, select all, delete all of it, and then control V to paste in. 
and make sure everything here is lowercase. So control S to save and then Python 3 script, we can see that it prints the number five. So there should be no quotation marks here. I'll update that in the script so that you don't accidentally put them in. So it's simply print and then the name of the variable, which in this case is number. And number is equal to five and that's why five prints to the console. Now save the script and execute it. You will see the number five returned in the console. To receive input from the user when executing a script, we can use the following, input. So if we want to ask a user to enter a number, compare the number to another number, and then print the answer to the screen, we can type the following. Number equals input, enter a number, then print number. So if we copy this again, again, these need to be single quotes, an oversight on my part, control S, enter a number, let's say 15, enter, and it will print the number we entered, 15. So this is not comparing a number, it's simply printing the number that the user enters. Save your script and execute it. Enter a number when asked, and you will see that it is printed back to you in the console. Now that we have some of the basic concepts established, we will look at if statements. This is one of the most useful tools when it comes to Python scripting. An if statement looks like the following. If x equals y, do this. Else, do something else. If x is equal to y, the first do this command will run. If it is not equal, the second do something else will be run instead. Let's use this knowledge to create a more comprehensive script. Open your script file, delete the contents of the file, and then type the following. So number equals int, input, enter a number. If number is less than five, print number is less than five. Else if number is greater than five or equal to five, print number is greater than or equal to five. Else print error. So let's copy this script. Go back to our Python script here. Paste in the new script. Now we'll have to perform some indenting here. Indenting is when if we have an if statement, the stuff within that if statement will just be a tab key away. So just this print here is under this if statement, so it will be one tab key in. The same as this else if statement, the print is one tab key in, and the same with this else statement. So finally then, just make sure that all of these are lowercase. And the prints should also be lowercase. Okay, control S to save. So let's just run through this quickly. So we're assigning a variable number. Number is going to be the input that the user enters. We're going to use an if statement to compare the variable number to the number five. If the number is less than five, we're going to print the number followed by is less than five. If it's greater than or equal to five, we're going to print the number the user entered followed by is greater than or equal to five. And if something goes wrong and the application crashes altogether, we're going to print error. Again, these need to be single quotes. I will update the script to ensure that they are single quotes when you are doing this lab. Okay, so control S to save that. Return to our console, run the script. We can see enter a number, let's enter two. Hit enter, two is less than five. If we run the script again, let's type eight, hit enter, eight is greater than or equal to five. Perfect, so our script is running as it should. Save your new script and execute it. Notice the different responses printed to the console depending on the number you enter. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to some basic commands in Python. We'll be covering more in Python in the next lab. And that brings us to the end of this lab.